I don't know about you, but it's almost March and I'm still freezing cold, i.e. zero Celsius cold. Now, the Celsius temperature scale, originally known as the centigrade scale, is based on the properties of water due to the fundamental role water plays in the Earth's environment and its importance in human life and many scientific contexts. The zero degree mark is the freezing point of water. So don't fight me on this one. Of course, Celsius is better than Fahrenheit. It just makes sense. But zero degrees Celsius isn't the coldest temperature. Temperature is the measure of the kinetic energy of particles. So of course, as scientists use a temperature scale to reflect this, the Kelvin scale. The coldest temperature is where your particles have minimal thermal motion i.e. zero Kelvin or absolute zero. But if there's a coldest temperature, surely it makes sense to also have a hottest temperature. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this video, let's talk about absolute hot. The big questions here are, is it possible to have a hottest temperature? What is this hottest temperature? And what happens when you go above the hottest temperature? If an absolute hot exists, then it should be the opposite of absolute zero. At this temperature, we expect the fundamental laws of physics as we know them to completely break down, much like at singularities and at the center of black holes. Now, the standard model of cosmology, which is our best model of our universe to date, describing our humble beginnings from a singularity, the Big Bang, and its rapid expansion through the period of inflation all the way to today. This model predicts a maximum temperature value, and it's the Planck temperature. It's 100 million, 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 million degrees, or 10 to the 32 Kelvin. This name probably sounds familiar. It was theorized by Max Planck, who realized that it's possible to come up with a set of fundamental units computed only from the universal constants, the gravitational constant G, the Planck constant H, the speed of light C, and the Boltzmann constant K. These fundamental units are the Planck length, this is the smallest physically measurable length, the Planck mass, the Planck time, which is the shortest measurable time, and then our lovely Planck temperature. At 10 to the power of minus 44 seconds after the Big Bang, so at Planck time, when the universe was just 10 to the power of minus 35 meters in size, so the Planck length, it's believed that the universe was as hot as the Planck temperature. Theories suggest that at such extreme temperatures, particle energies become so large that gravitational forces between them become as strong as any other fundamental force in the universe. That is, gravity could become as important as the other three fundamental forces of the universe, electromagnetism and the strong and weak nuclear forces. And this means that potentially they could join to form a single unified force. And this theory of everything has long been on the wish list. It's like the holy grail of all theoretical physicists. But one thing's for certain, such a scenario would lead to the production of miniature Planck mass black holes, which are the hottest possible black holes that can exist. Any particle that approaches and surpasses the Planck temperature would gain so much energy that they travel at the speed of light. And we know that when matter approaches the speed of light, its mass increases without limit, and its density also increases significantly. This then potentially would lead to the creation of Planck mass black holes. These black holes are known as Kugelblitz. Our little paradox brought forth a freaking Kugelblitz since they form from energy rather than matter and could potentially be the interstellar engines or interstellar drives for future black hole starships. But the Planck temperature isn't the only candidate for absolute hot. The Hagedorn temperature is a concept from theoretical physics, particularly in the field of quantum chromodynamics. This is a theory of strong interaction, a fundamental force describing the interactions between quarks and gluons which make up hadrons, such as protons and neutrons. 
The Hagedorn temperature is effectively the melting point of hadrons. At CERN, when you collide particles together, you create new particles, and the more energy you put into a system, the more new particles you make. The Hagedorn temperature represents a limiting temperature beyond which the system cannot get any hotter, but instead it just results in the creation of more particles. This phenomenon effectively caps the temperature, making it kind of like a ceiling for the thermal energy of a system. Hagedorn initially estimated this temperature to be about 150 mega electron volts, or 2 times 10 to the 12 Kelvin, which is many, many, many orders of magnitude smaller than Planck's temperature. But really, this value is hard to pin precisely because it depends on various factors including the evolving parameters of strongly interacting particles and the development of precise mathematical frameworks like lattice gauge theory. So what is the hottest temperature? Well, it's probably the Planck temperature at 10 to the 32 Kelvin, but much lower than this at the Hagedorn temperature of 10 to the 12 Kelvin, you probably can't get much higher than that anyway. Anyway, that's all for this week's video. Thank you so much to my YouTube Perks members for supporting. As always, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.